Okay, guys. So I think this is the official one <laughs> because the last one I kept on uh, tapping on invite another person, invite another person. Um, so I think it got confused or something. So that's why I had to like start it. But yeah, I got I got my tea here. You see, I got my tea there. I got some pens because I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to learn. Um, and yeah, we are going to start in a few. So give me a wave if you just um, joined. Please give me a wave so that I see who is here. We have connected. Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, someone brings you your phone. Wow. No. God, no. I have to stop phone. Bonani. I have to stop phone and then we have to try and log in into a different phone. And, but we are back on. We are back oh, on. Okay. Okay. That's what matters. That's what yeah. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad to have you. I love your hair. Wow. Your Thank hair looks you. Good. Your hair looks very good. Um, I try. Yes. So, guys, um, for today, this is going to be like totally different because now. We are all here to listen to Bonani's story, uh, and I'm excited about it. So I'm, I'm just going to give you guys uh, some background, because I know there are other people who are joining, and they don't know anything about the CA stream. They just like um, my, my Instagram um, account, so I like those people too. <laughs> so I'm just going to fill them up. Um, okay. So, so um, the reason why, guys, this is like a fearless Friday chat um, it's because the minimum um, years required for you to actually um, complete and qualify as a chartered accountant is actually seven years, right? So other people are fortunate enough to do it in seven years. But mm -hmm. then um, for most of us, for most of us, it's, it doesn't take seven years because, you know, there are obstacles, there are so many things that are happening. So I thought that it would be great to have this live so that um, we can hear about Bonani's journey. Because most of the times, as you're going through your undergrad, as you're going through your postgrad, you think you're alone. When you keep on failing and you're failing the bottom exams and you're doing all of that, you think mm -mm, no one is like me. You start to question yourself. There's some self-doubt. So because Bonani has done it, um, I just wanted to hear, you know, how, how was she feeling? What happened? What did she improve on? You know, so that she can give you guys some words of encouragement and you can know how to pick yourself up and most importantly, understand that it's not you alone. It's it's most of us who are actually going through this journey and, and it's taking years and it's still fine because, you know, it's still worth it. So, okay, so now I'm going to ask you to just introduce yourself, Benani, just... You know, anything. You can tell us where you're from, maybe where you studied, um, you know, just how you define yourself. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Did I clear my throat? <laughs> so, yes, I am excited about this. And briefly, I um, studied at the University of Free State, so I'm a copsy to anybody who is studying there currently. I did my undergrad, which was the three-year degree. And then afterwards, I then did my honors, which also went perfectly. And then after that, that's when life started happening. I did my CTA first time, did not go as expected. And obviously, you, you are devastated, things happen. But I went back, tried again. And then second time, that's when I made it. And obviously, I, you pep talk yourself, OK, I've done, uh, I'm good now. This is great. And then I started going to work, which we'll um, talk about as we go by on that journey and how then the years started piling up up until um, the 10 years, which it took for me to be a CA. Yes, yes. Okay, so, yeah. So um, when it comes to undergrad, I see it went smoothly, right? Uh, but just to give people, like, a sense of, like, your background, like... Um, 
Like, what would you say to just explain your background and maybe your childhood just briefly so that we can get to know the type of person you are, yeah. Okay, so I have four siblings. I am, like, number three. And then we are all, I would say, academically strong, if I put it like that. So my older sister is an internal auditor, little sister, economics day. So we all, yeah, did our fair share of the books. And then I was raised in a single um, single parent household, which also brought its own challenges, of course. Mm -hmm. But obviously through that, you gain a lot of more strength. So obviously most of my strength came from the fact that, number one, um, the financial means for me to be able to be where I am. Yes. Um, that struggle, that element of this, that struggle made me want to push myself. So when um, when I said when I did my 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 studies at US, I was under a bursary full time. The whole until I finished, I was under a bursary. So obviously that also added a fuel to go. You cannot lose this bursary. Like yes, and that goes yes. and tell, can I lose this bursary? Yes. But obviously with mm, on that, which bursary did you use and how did you apply for it? So I was under um, KPMG. So okay. from first year up until I finished. How that happened is, I did not know anything about KPMG or any of the big fours while I was still in varsity. Yes. So by chance, apparently, my mother was those people who, as much as she does not, not technology, but she knew life. So she went apparently to the internet, she googled bursaries for people doing accounting, anything that popped up. Mother just applied. She applied to wow, everything. Wow, that's nice. Yes, and then by luck, I got um, that bursary plus, I think, there was another one that I got, but we eventually, um, after the interviews and everything, we ended up um, taking the KPMG up. So I didn't even know anything about KPMG. I just discovered, as I got a call, you have an interview. I'm like, interview with who? <laughs> For what? Because she didn't tell me anything. Also, I don't think she understood the process after. So it will be a call, you have an interview, okay, I get there. What is this all about? Oh, you had applied for a bursary. Oh, okay. So that's how it happened and that's how I got yeah. to know. Yeah, that's how I got to know about KPMG. Wow. So um, whilst we are on that, how did you know that the chartered accountancy stream is for you? Because I get so many students who are like, oh my God, Zanele, I think accounting is not for me. Now I'm thinking of dropping it because it's too challenging. I used to think I like accounting. Um, so firstly, did you do accounting in high school? And secondly, how did you know that this is the stream you want to take? Okay, for me, it became a default. So I did your maths, your accounting, your science, business, everything. When it was time to choose, I it was like a process of elimination, if I can put it like that. Yes. Science, we didn't get along. History, we didn't get along. So as it got to to be narrowed, I realized, okay, I actually love business because at that time I had not been exposed to accounting as a major subject. It was just your business studies and your, um, your science. So I knew I don't want to do anything with science because I don't understand science. I mm -hmm. struggle with science. So the next option was, okay, what careers are there? Anything in business. I didn't know anything about accounting. I didn't know CASA. I'm in grade, I think it's grade 8 or grade 10 when you choose. I don't even know anything about the things. All I knew was, I want to do anything except science. <laughs> what other thing is there? And that's yeah. how accounting was introduced. So I didn't go and say, I want to be a CA. What can I do? I didn't know what was a CA. I was like, I don't like, I don't like science. What can I do? And then it became a default. Wow. And that's wow. how it so, so you communicated that to your mother, and that's when your mom started researching everything on accounting. So, did did you start that that process in uh, when you were in grade eleven, or did you did you start the process of applying for bursaries in grade twelve? Um, with okay, so after I finished my matric, mm. um, I had to take a gap year. Not a voluntary gap year like you oh, know those okay. gap year. Yes, life type of gap years. So obviously I was sitting at home. There wasn't much I was doing. So during that year, I ended up doing a computer something something just to keep me busy. Yes. I don't even have a certificate. I just did it because I did it to push time and I was bored. Yes. And then during that process, while I was doing nothing, I think 
that's when my mother started applying. Obviously, motivation, child is just sitting, doing nothing, waking up, going to class once a week. So that, during that period, it was 2009, while I was on my gap year, mm. that's when uh, the application started happening. Mm. Okay, so let me know if you're not comfortable disclosing this, but I know so many students who are in grade 12 and haven't decided, and they take certain decisions, right? Um, so when it comes to your gap year, for example, I'll just say from my side, I know that uh, when I decided to be a child accountant, I also wanted to be an actuary, right? So what happened is that I applied for both scholarships, but then the other scholarship, the actuary one, I actually didn't see my email in time when I had to send certain documents. So okay. what happened is that when they were selecting the candidates, as much as later on I had the marks, but because I only saw the email later and I only sent the stuff when I got the results. Um, you know, like, obviously, they couldn't take me because I didn't follow the procedure. So what would you say maybe was, um, what did you learn? What did you do that you would advise the matriculants or the grade 11s to prepare better so that they don't take the, the, the gap year that they didn't really plan for? Um, so, okay, um, let me just elaborate a little bit on my gap year. So my gap year was, I did finish my grade 12. Yes. And then because of the type of school that I went to, oh. so I didn't go to the normal grade 12, you write your metric, you get your metric results. So no, I went to a different type of school where you don't write metric, you only write your SAT. Oh. So after, during my grade 12, I was writing my SATs and... SATs just did not want to be passed. Like, they just oh, did not want yes. to. So, so you get to write them a couple of times until you realize, yeah. So I wrote them in 20, 2008, a couple of times. I think I wrote twice or three times in 2008. Yes. Then, because I didn't have the the, um, the exemption to go to varsity, <clears throat> I had to stay home for that year and try oh, and, see my, oh. and see if my marks could improve. So I didn't have the metric exemption to be able to apply for varsity. So I had to take okay. the gap because I can't go to varsity without yes, the exemption. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that's the gap came because of that. Yeah, that's quite valuable because there are still students who, in as much as they were able to sit for the normal metric, but during mm. this period, they are preparing for the supplementary exams so that mm. they can prepare for so, so, okay, that is quite valuable. Okay, so now we can move on, right? Um, so we have discussed the fact that undergrad was quite fine for you. Undergrad, you know, you did what you can do. You passed graduation, right? So yes. now CTA, right? No. Yes. CTA? Yes. <laughs> so you, you said you attempted CTA twice. Correct. Yes. Okay. So what was different between um, your second attempt of CTA and your first attempt? And um, what would you say was like, what did you change uh, okay. that, that actually led to the success when it came to CTA? So I think the biggest thing, because my undergrad was a breeze mm -hmm. and then honors was a breeze also. Yes. Obviously the mind goes, this is not as hard as I thought it is. So when I went to CTA, as much as yes, I did give my all, I studied. I, mm -hmm. I, me and books, literally, we get along. So I'm a bookworm. I'm always in the library. I'm always studying. So for me, it was, it's going to be a definite pass because I've been passing, right? Yes. So CTA, I remember first, first test we wrote. That shook me. I remember getting my script and I'm like, I received 13%. I'm like, no. I'm like, one, three. One three, how does one oh, recover yeah. from 13%? <laughs> I was shocked. Like, mm -hmm. I am a distinction type of person. So for me, from distinction to that, and then some of our best marks would be like 30%, 40%. So when you benchmark a 13 to a 40, you would be very happy because it was better. As, as the, obviously the test progresses, you try and improve. You try and... If there's an extra class, I would go. If there's a tutorial, I am there. If mm. anything, just to get the marks to be better. Mm. Obviously, by June now, they you'd get to start assessing, okay, because I was under a bursary, I need to send my marks to my bursary holder. Yes, yes, yes. That was a terrible experience because now, by June, I'm, I'm failing. I, I'm failing. It is, it, it, I'm failing. <laughs> I send my results. 
But obviously, because it's not your defining marks, they still continue with the buzzer. Yes. We continued. I knew at some point that City A was not going to happen. The marks were going south. I would study. I would. I cried. I would not lie to you. I cried. I would email my lectures. I'm like, I am studying, but it is not going in. I feel like I'm wasting time. The more I put in the hours, I get to the test. I find it, what I have studied, what they are talking about, I don't understand. So I didn't feel like I, I lack the knowledge because I'm like, I've done this for four years. So I don't think it's a knowledge based yes, thing. Exactly. What am I doing wrong? So yes, yes. obviously, we talked with the lecturers, they try to motivate you. You obviously, okay, you leave motivated, you try again, but CTA was not happening and it didn't happen. So when the results came, by the time the results came, I knew it was a fail. Mm. But I just didn't know how bad was the fail. Yes. So for me, I knew it was just a matter of am I like 45, am I 40, where are we? Yes. Results day, it, it was terrible. No, like it was terrible. And for me, the biggest disappointment was, okay, I knew I'm going to lose the bursary. If I lose the bursary, what's going to happen? Mm. So that was the most um, terrifying experience, if I could say. Not to say that I failed, but the fact that now, who's going to pay for my for my yes. school fees? Yes. I, I, there's no way I'm going to call, uh, hi, mom, by the way, I need you back to pay, because she can't. I knew mm. she couldn't. So I needed, I, I couldn't quit, but I... Yeah, so it was like, what, 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 what is the next step now? What do I do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that was CTA one, year one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then I, 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 I obviously have to call home. Hi, how are you? I, I failed. Like I failed. <laughs> then mom was like, okay, what do you want to do? I'm like, I have to go back to varsity. Mm -hmm. So now I was like, okay, I have to call my varsity, call my varsity, send them the results. December, they are not saying anything. Then they sent me an email to say you're on probation. I'm like, wow, okay. So I can go back to varsity, but I'm on probation. So that mm -hmm. means if by June or July I have not, um, my results have not improved, they automatically now cut me off, which now I have to decide between, okay, if I fail, and now they have not paid a single cent, what is going to happen? Who's going to mm -hmm. pay for the debt that I'll be owing? So I had to decide, between, do I go back, accumulate a debt, which I don't know if I'm going to pass? Or, well, I didn't have an, an or. For me, it was like, I'm going back. <laughs> what will happen will happen. I went back, and then with CTA 2, I think with, with experience, I don't know if I should call it experience, yeah, but with experience, yeah. you know, okay, I knew my biggest uh, struggle was management accounting, and auditing. Those were my struggle. Yes. Accounting and tax, I loved. Those were my babies. So the issue was, even on my CTA results, it showed that mm. I gave more attention to what I love because it gave me that boost to go. Accounting, I know. Tax, I know. Financial accounting, no, management accounting and tax and auditing was a struggle. So yes. now I had to put more effort, number one, on the ones that I hate. As much as I knew that I don't like auditing and I don't like this. I still need them to be able to pass. Mm. So I had to, I'm not the type that likes going to my lectures. I, I don't like going to my lectures. I, I don't know why. I, I didn't like it, but I had to now go to my lectures, first of all, and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. What can I do to improve? I had to, um, so at the University of Free States, I think the lecture was Cornelius. If I hope I'm getting it right. I had to go and be like, I don't understand where I'm going wrong. Like, I'm putting in the hours, I'm putting in the time. What is wrong? So getting that second person to say, this is what you can do. This is how you can improve. Actually, that's how versus me sitting in the library seven hours Monday every day. And I'm going to do the same thing. The cycle continued and it continued and... I'm and gonna feel like they are the same results. You have yeah, the same results. So that you get different results. That's true. That is so. That's true. true. So eventually, when I started the year, obviously I didn't consult because I had my own game strategy on how I'm gonna do it. But mm. obviously, with the marks, you can see that this is not working. So I need a second person okay. to be like, "This is what you can do. This is how you can improve. This is how you should actually be tackling your management accounting. This is the one that you're actually struggling on." 
And I realized, okay, the one which was really struggling was the costing one. Finance was fine. Costing was the issue. So now we had to mm. like teach more with the costing. So mm. consultation, consultation, consultation. It, it, helped. it literally helped. That one-on-one is different from when you're in the classroom asking. Because one-on-one, I feel like they they tell you more yes. than what they tell the rest yes. of the class. So that consultation is important. I would stress it. If they have to know your name by the time you're done, then you 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 have nailed it. Like I when I when I put up my my story, my text lecturer actually commented. I was like, that's the one I went to cry to. That's why she remembered because I was there to office. I'm like, ma'am, I don't understand, ma'am. I need you, and that's how the relationship started. And consultation is key. Yeah, I like the fact that you highlighted it because students forget. Like students forget that. As a lecturer, you are there for them. And most of the lectures, like, I know for sure when I was in lecturing, like, I wasn't paid as much, but I loved my job. Like, <laughs> like you know, like, when I had to weigh, like, what I'm being paid and the satisfaction that I'm getting from actually lecturing and engaging with students, like, mm. I, I choose that anytime, right? So that's what students forget. And the moment you have that one-on-one uh, with a student in comparison with like looking at so many people in a classroom yeah. able to add even much more value because now you know who you're dealing with what are the core issues so guys remember that's a key one consult 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 yes for yes. you can continue um, so yes that was cta and then by september no by july obviously now we're back in the game we are getting there we're not getting your 60s your 70s we're still on the 40 50s but it's yeah, better than right. yeah. It was better than the first time. Then the buzzer obviously wants their results. Give them the results. I've passed two. I failed two. But that's something. It's something. But obviously, when you have a buzzer and yeah. they decide if you still have accommodation, they decide if you still continuing. They're deciding right now. Mm-hmm. I had to just have faith to go. Yes, I failed two. But the two I passed should back me up. Yes. And so I, I, I give them my results. Obviously, July finished, August finished. They're not saying anything. So for me, if you're not saying anything, I'm first, I'm still fine. You continue. By September, I get a call to say, did you see your account has been paid? I did not believe it. I literally ran to there because I didn't have a laptop at that time. So you go to the computer lab. I log in. I'm like, zero, zero. Woo! I'm like, that is a balance that it was to tell you want to see. Zero, zero. It not is zero, zero. I was so excited. But now, obviously, that had to motivate me to go. These people have faith that even though I failed the two, I can still get get there. Yes. So, obviously, that is another motiva- that was another key motivation for me to go. If they think I can do it, I, I, th- I believe I can also do it. So, again, mm-hmm. library and past question papers are key also those ones those ones are like i don't even know like before i would even study like i would check what was on the previous question paper what am i targeting these are the things i should know if i know a question paper i feel like i'm I'm good i might not know everything that the scope that they gave me but if i have a basis which is a past question paper and i can do it properly then I feel like I'm ready. So for me, past question papers was because in CTA there is so much information. There is so much work. Information overload. You don't even know, oh my gosh, where to start, where to take. You've got four subjects. All of them are year modules. You don't know what to take, what not to take. It's too much. So when you start with this is a year question paper. This is what they asked. This is what they focused on. You 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 that is the first step I would say. Past question papers are key. Yes, on that one, can I ask, um, for second attempt CTA, because now you had an idea of what usually happens, yes. you started with like past question papers, right? But would you recommend that for someone who's doing CTA for the first time? With past question papers? I think for me, since first year, I've always started with, okay, here's the work I've already started. Let me go sit down and attempt a question paper. Because obviously you don't just go take a question paper and then you go through it, you claim the answers. Okay. No, that is not even what I'm saying. Okay. You first okay. did the material. Then like a normal exam, you literally sit with the question paper. 
you it's, take it, you answer it without any book, nothing. Then you go mark yourself to say, where are we still having a problem? Then you go back to the books to go, I don't understand actually groups. Groups are killing me. Only that this foreign portion of the group is actually the one I'm having issues with. Then you go back to the books. Not necessarily you take a question paper, you cram it. No, that is not going to help yes. NCTA. It's yes. a matter of, do I know the principles in this question paper? If I know the principles, I'm good. Because obviously, yes. you know, everybody's doing CTA, you know, you cannot pass by cramming. It's the principles. So if I know the principles, then I'm I'm sorted. That's, yeah, yeah. This is actually great. And we always speak about the principle book. So in just a one line, just high level, how would you explain your exam technique? Like, um, and how did you know that you you had like a good exam technique? Because now you said I would take a past paper and I would do it properly. So so what does doing it properly mean for you? Okay, doing it properly would be if you like right now if you have an exam, mm. you get there, they give you a paper, you don't even know what's happening. Mm. You don't even know which book am I going to be opening first. <laughs> that is what you do. I won't like the first time I did the exam technique, it's that thing of Oh, okay, they're asking this question. Okay, where are my notes? That you realize as time goes by that that doesn't work for you once you get to the thing. In my the comfort of my own home, that works where I get a question, I'm like, okay, I haven't touched on that topic. Let me pause now. Let me go back to my books. Let me study. That technique obviously will fail you during the exam because number one, on the exam day, if they give me a question you don't know, you need to have a method of, okay, if I don't know this, what would I do if I was in an exam right now? Mm -hmm. Obviously, in an exam, either you win it or you're like, this is not for me, it's going to waste my time. Because sometimes you realize, if I sit too much on this, in an exam setting, I'm going to lose marks which I could have gotten, which are actually maybe at the end of the question. Because mm -hmm. I was stuck with that one. So when you practice in your own home to go, I can skip, I can come back. And then you continue and realize, actually, the one I left behind was not even as significant as the ones I found going further, which I could even check out. So doing it as if you are in the exam, exam. with no guidance, with no extra notes, with no sticky notes, with nothing, mm -hmm. that can also help you so much. Yeah, wow. Okay, guys, we're always talking about exam techniques, so I hope you got something from this. That's the good stuff. The other thing I want to get back to before we move on to the board exams and stuff is that you said you didn't have a laptop in CTA. Girl, how did you do it? Yay! Oh, money was tight. Money was tight. So my first laptop was at KPMG. That was the first time I felt like I've made it, mom. I have my own personal laptop. That was my life. So from first year until CTA 2, the campus uh, computer lab and myself were best friends. So if I needed anything, I knew my time was limited. So I think also that motivated. My time was limited because mm -hmm. I'm not going to be working out at night, number one. Mm -hmm. I, I'm afraid of the dark, first of all. I'm not working on campus. Mm -hmm. So that means I only have during the day. Mm -hmm. So that means obviously social life doesn't happen. It literally doesn't happen because yeah. during the day, I need to be in front of a computer. Whatever I need to print needs to be printed. Whatever yeah. must be downloaded must be downloaded. I need yeah. to have it with me. I cannot be... Back then, smartphones were... were, were yeah, smartphones was not the most important thing in my mother's uh, budget. So I had to make sure I have the physical papers printed. So I did not have a laptop. So that thing of, I don't have a laptop, I can't do it. Yes, back now, maybe because we are now technologically driven and all that. But back then... I literally was killing those trees. I was printing and printing and printing. <laughs> that that was me. I couldn't do anything. I didn't have a laptop. That is literally wow. the thing. I, nobody was thinking laptop was the most important thing. Yes. It was important and mm. that was the only thing. Laptop. Wow. <laughs> because I got my laptop in third year. So I remember how I struggled from first to third year up until I got the laptop. So I can't even imagine surviving CTA even without that laptop. So, so wow, that is quite <laughs> inspiring. And guys, I like how Vunani just, like, she turned this negative situation into a positive thing. Because now you became more efficient. You became so uh, wise when it came to, like, your time management. So, so just remember, whenever you have any obstacles, find a way around it so that it works for you. So, okay, now let's move uh, from CTA 2 um, to... 
Afterwards, what happened? After? Afterwards, back to sister. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, obviously, after now passing CTA, I've got this motivation. I'm like, okay, now I'm going to start because I already had a contract. Because with the buzzering, automatically the the training contract was already sorted from first year. So I already knew after my articles, I'm going to be saving my articles at KPMG. So that for me, there was no that application, where am I going to go? It was done already. Mm. So I wrote then the ITC in Jen. Yes. Mm-hmm. ITC nailed it. Oh, did I feel like this dream is like here? I felt like the dream was here because I wrote it first time, passed it. I'm like, wow. I'm like, the girl is back. The girl was back. I oh, can yeah. do this. I'm going to be a CASA. By the time I'm done with my articles, registered, ready, and done. Three articles, I'm done. I'm out of here, CASA. Yes. And did life not agree with what I was saying? Which year was it when you passed your... So I, I went KPMG 2016. So, so that means I got my results Jan 2016. Okay, okay. So that means, yeah. Jen, then obviously you save your first year of articles. Yes. Second year you register now for bot two, which is yes. now the it's... game changer. The reason I would become a CSA. Mm-hmm. I register uh, yeah, Feb March day. But I did the APT board course. It was amazing. Did the board course, obviously, first time, obviously when they test, so they test you, you do your your normal simulation test to see how you'll be able to teaching you the techniques if I can do it like that. So test one, plant it, failed it. Didn't understand what was happening in APT because obviously APC was so different from ITC where I'm like complex, you know, you need to know your emphasis, you need to know this was like, no, this is now, uh, can you answer real life questions in in a limited time space? Can you think out of, out of the box? So that was not, I did not understand that concept. So first mm-hmm. test I failed. So luckily after failing, you get a mentor, they 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 help you on what to do, where your mistakes are. So you they you have a 24 hour mentor, if I can put like that. You can call them, you can schedule um appointments and they help you. Mm. I didn't think I needed one, so I did not go to it. I did not call any mentor, I did not do anything like that. I was like, I will learn this and I will figure this out. So you get so after failing, you don't go and rewrite again. I was on borderline. So borderline means I just need to, in the comfort of my own home, type an answer, give it to them, and then they check if I'm good. Mm. I was still relaxed. I'm like, it's 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 a test run. So I, there's no need to stress. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Slant it through. They were like, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Problem with that is when you relax. When I did it, I did it with... So many screenshots are open. I mean, desktop is open. I've got so many. I can Google if I don't know. I'm like, okay, maybe this is correct. So I didn't do it under simulation where I'm like, I've got one hour, let's do it. No, I'm again sitting at the end. Like, I don't know this. Let me open this. Typed it, copy, paste. But I still passed the APT, that second one. <laughs> second one now came, I think, September, somewhere there. I'm not uh, confusing the dates. That's when I nailed it. So the principles now were getting better. I knew my principles. I knew how to do the things. I was going to all my classes. I didn't miss any of my classes. I was attending. I was a full student. Second test, nail it. So I didn't have to repeat anything. APC, real deal now. The main exam. I'm going to... The main exam came. I want to hear. (laughs) Wow, that exam threw me. Of course, Mm -hmm. I was like, first of all, I think what is demotivating is when you know you've got it mm. and when you arrive at the exam, it got me. So I felt like I was not smart. I felt like all the seven years I was in varsity went away. I was like, what English is this? Because I don't understand what is happening. So obviously with, with APC, they train you. Number one, you cannot leave an, a question unanswered. Yes. Mugel will type whatever comes my oh b- b- first t- attempt I actually did manual. I did not like computers. I was very slow typing. Oh yeah, but it makes sense. Remember, considering, considering, yeah, like, considering like, your situation, it makes sense. Yes. Yes. So I didn't like computers. So I opted to write. Mm. Oh, my hand, my hand could not handle. 
Eight hours. <laughs> eight hours. I'm sure you're like eight hours non-stop. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. I feel like eating took away ten minutes, even if it was two minutes. Like I was so stressed. That test was terrible. Like that. I felt it was terrible. I know some people maybe may be a bit I feel like I did not understand what I was doing, but I put answers down because number one, if they say if you leave a question, you automatically fail. You are so yeah, like, dismissed. Mm. You're out. So I'm like, even if I'm writing and even I can see I'm writing things that are going opposite direction, I need to write. Yes. I Results came. But I still feel like I did good. Not as great, good. No more, like maybe you'll see. Not anything high. Just see. Yes, I just need yes, to see. Yes, yes. Yeah. Results came back. But obviously, I wasn't sure of myself. So mm-hmm. I did not attend those parties that they do when they bring the results. I was like, I'm going home. I'm not going to be part of this. Got my results in the Hall train station. Mm-hmm. That was a terrible mistake. Receiving that SMS to say, Saika regrets to tell you Yo. in the Hall train station. I know that SMS. I you know. That SMS kills. It does something. It was like, dear Wonani, psycho regrets. You don't even want to read anymore. You're like. <laughs> like you're like like, lying down after that. You don't want to be around people, let alone how things. Like, you just want a bed and a pillow. Like. I was, yeah, it happened. Got home. Life happens. You move on. Monday, it's back to business. Like, there's no time for taking leave anything. Life goes on. But I was filled up now. I was like, okay, fine. I failed. We can do this. So first, first fail, I didn't take it like I was broken hearted. I cried, no. Like, no. I took yeah. it like a test. And on that, can I ask you, because I know, because um, I, I repeated ITC, so when I went that Monday, when I went back, in my team, there were two of us who wrote ITC and the other guy passed and I didn't pass. So I felt so much shame, right? Like, it's like when I walked into the boardroom, I felt like everyone was feeling so sorry. They were like, oh my gosh, you know, you didn't make it. Like, I felt like, I don't know. I, I just felt like everyone was judging me. Um, but what I realized is that that first day was key for me because my team all acted like nothing happened. Like, they never said congratulations to the other guy. They never said sorry to me. They just acted like the result never went out. So so that gave me some strength. Would you say that when you went back, uh, maybe did you have some shame? And, and how did you deal with it? Did people have any comments at all? So for me, it was so different. My circle of friends, so the, the team that I did my... Um, the people that I worked with, yes. some of them were close to me, who we were friends, also failed. So, oh, you know, oh, you oh, see that oh. I'm not alone. We are together. <laughs> we are together. <laughs> so, it was that thing of, oh, my friend, I failed. Oh, my friend, I failed. So, uh, we were like four that failed. So, I'm thinking, Hmm, this happens to my lot of people. So for me, it wasn't that I'm the only one that fails. No, in my year, it, 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 it was a couple of us that didn't make it. Mm-hmm. So it was that thing of, okay, we failed. That means now, oh, automatically for me, it's I have a group. Mm-hmm. That was my my biggest thing to go. Because when you fail and finding a new group with new people, it's mm-hmm. a struggle. So I was like, I've got a group, I'm sorted. So for me, it was it was, it was was chill because there were people also from my uh, circle of friends who also didn't make it. Yes. So that helped. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, yeah. let's continue. Yes, so now I register again. So registering for me for the second time was not even a question. I knew I'm going to do this, I'm going to pass it, I'm going to nail it, but I have to register. So I registered again for the board exams. I I got a life coach this time. They, they, they are. But me being me, I'm a strong, black, independent woman. I go to my life coach session the lady, they asked me, how do I feel? Like, how does the result, how did you take the result? Like, she wanted, like, you know, a therapy session. I was like, I am not about that life. So I gave her the answer I thought would make her happy. Right? That meant she will not call me again. I told him, girl, I am happy. I am fine. I'm excited. I've accepted the results. Things happen. This is life. I've even registered. I'm even, I believe for the best. This is my year. This is going to work out. I told everything she needed to hear. And from there, that was, I think, the first and the last time we spoke because I was not going to sit and cry. No. 
So we did that live session. That session we were done. Went to my lectures, but the most important thing which I did was I got my script from Psyche. Yeah. I was like, I am not going to waste time, Psyche. I want my script. I want to see. I want to see why I went wrong. I want to be marked. I want to be assessed because with APT, they they allow you to get your script back. They sit with you. Obviously, you do your self assessment. You tell them where you think you went wrong, and then they come back and say, "Okay, yeah, you did this." So I did that whole process, and I saw my mistakes. I will not lie. There was no way I would have passed the first exam. Even I saw my script, and I, I agree with them. It, it was terrible. So I did my assessment. I, I I handed it back to them. We did our session. They walked me through where I did wrong, what I need to improve. And I took those tips. Obviously, I went back also to class. So now when you go, you repeat, I think you hear things differently than when you do it for the first time. So the tips they gave me first, first time when I was doing my APT, as much as I had them, it wasn't the same because sometimes you hear something, but you don't understand what to do with the information. So it could be a very good thing, but I'm like, okay. So second time around, when you get tips, you're like, oh, that's oh. I should actually do that. Oh, is that why they were saying I should link that to that? So it makes more sense now. Mm-hmm. So again, I took all my classes. APT went so well the second time around. I passed my first test. I passed my second test. So for me, I got that boost to go. That means I'm doing something right. Yeah. I would consult when I needed to consult. After getting my scripts, I would consult. So this time around, I used those resources. Mm. The second time around, results hit worse than the first because I'm like, I did everything right. Mm. I took, I went to consultation. I passed my first and second test. Mm. The real one came. Jiggy, jiggy, it's a fail. And you're like... No, this was year what? This was love year eight. I'm like, I'm tired now. I'm like, I'm tired now. Year eight, I'm like, no. This one was even worse, the results. Because I had gone on secondment, because I was done with my articles. I went on secondment. So for me, this was a victory type of result that I was waiting for. Because of the, I think it was eight hour difference between where I was in, in South Africa. Yes. Now what my thought was preparing to go to work. Yes. Do you have any psycho regrets? Again. Did I not take leave that day? That this one, this one shook me. I was like, I'm not ready for this one. This one, I was mentally prepared for a pass. I knew it was going to, I was ready. It did not want to. And worst of all, there's no family around. You are literally by yourself. Mm. I went and bought myself. This one, I will not lie. Uh, there was no independence now. Uh, this one <laughs> blew me out and I was not ready for it. How can I find You have to come back to South Africa. Reality is you failed, obviously. Mm. Now I have to decide, do I want to attend board exam again? Mm. Uh, so my decision was no. I did not do the board exam again because I had done it the first time. I did it the second time, and second time it went well. So I feel like there's nothing wrong with the program, but I feel like I I, I don't understand where it will benefit me the third time around because, yeah, I just couldn't. So I did not register. I spoke to APT. I was like, will I still be allowed to write? I don't want the board exam. I just want to know if I'll be able to write. Yeah. So luckily for the APT. Because the board course can be quite pricey as well. And as you do more attempts, your employer doesn't want to pay for the course anymore. They just pay for the exam only. So yeah. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And with employer also, that is also important because they pay for the first one. Second one, they pay, but they take it from your salary. And then if you pass, then you get it back. But because I didn't pass, automatically that was automatically gone. Mm-hmm. So third time, I was like, this is not out of my pocket, first of all. Number two, I was like, whatever tips I have, I have to now literally take them because they were not changing from the first APT to the second one. They were the same. It needed to be now my own. Yeah, my own. Yes, I didn't go. It, I was depressed. I would not even lie. So I didn't even bother. Probably the first six months, I did nothing. Like, I literally was like, 
I don't see a point. I do not see the point. Mm. If it's a pass, it's a pass. If it's a fail, it's a fail. You get to that point where you're like, I'm tired now. Yes, I'm not saying I'm giving up. Yes. No, okay. I'm saying I'm tired of failing. <laughs> There's a different, like, ask a person who has failed. We are tired of failing, but we are not tired of being a CA. I want to be a CA. I am tired <laughs> of failing. So yeah. that was the thing to go. I will go right. I'm just tired of failing. Mm-hmm. So I didn't register for the board exam. Six months down the line, obviously, at some point, you need to wake up. As much as yeah, you are down, at some point, the months are moving. APT 1, I know they wrote, they wrote. APT 2, now you're like, I cannot go there not prepared. Yes. I'm already just killing my own career right now. Mm-hmm. So I got myself back. Again, went back to the strategy of old question papers now. Mm. Literally one. I took one question paper, sat with it, did the triggers, did the research, did everything. But now my approach changed to go instead of saying, okay, here's the script of a because it obviously there's no right or wrong answer. But here's the script of a of an HC. What can I learn? Not what they wrote, in terms of the layout, in terms of how they structured their answers in terms of what they didn't put in. Because I realized, literally, to get a C, honestly, some of the scripts will be like, that's all they wrote. And they... <laughs> I know, fun. especially when it comes to stating the obvious that Saka expects of you. you like, I knew that. <laughs> Thank you. That assists me. But I know I'm supposed to put that. I know. You would find the answers are literally one page. I'm on a roll trying to write two pages, three pages. They don't care. Like, stick to the point. So now my third time, when I... Yes. So when I did it the third time, I'm like, number one, if you're typing and you get to two pages, you you are typing too much. That was my strategy. I was like, so I would take the tips from HC. HC, this is what they're doing. They're literally writing half a page. They're writing a page, one and a half page. Even in a complex question... This is what they did. So I took the tip instead of, I didn't take, this is what they wrote and this is how they flowed because it's not going to help me in the exam. It's not going to help me. I'm like, how is this person structuring their answer? Based on the question, how did they decide that I want to put it in this format, in this type of manner? And that was the trip. Literally, I had a one-pager when I went to write the, the, the third attempt where I'm like, this is what needs to be in every answer. Yes. Number one, like, it felt so and not important, but I would put, you need to make sure that you have, if the, they're saying it's a mail, is your format in an email format? Like I had such things, which is so basic. Yes. Basic would kill you. Do you. If they say address to this person, do I say dear person? When do I greet when I start the email? Literally, I, would, I took somebody's greeting, put it in my little... <laughs> Thing to say, if I have to greet like this to get a C, I will greet like this when I start my answer. My format, how is this person putting the format? Not the answer, but the structure of an HC. And that is what I took when I did the third attempt to go. Is how did this person tackle this? Came the day. Can I say something before we continue? Guys, we have about seven minutes, and I, I know we won't complete within the next seven minutes. So, what's going to happen is that. Within an hour, obviously, Instagram is going to cut us. We can't extend it. But what I'm going to do, just have your phone. I'm going to start the live again because this is important. This is important information. And once uh, we are done with the APC attempts, we're going to talk about, you know, what uh, Bonani has learned and all of that. We're just going to sum it up. So so don't worry. When Instagram cuts us, um, just stay on Instagram. I'm going to start it just after that. And then we can come back together so that we can wrap everything together and take all the lessons together. Yes, Panani, you can continue. Yes. So I was still saying with the, the last APC, the, the, uh, the, yeah, the third attempt, I had to change, obviously, my own strategy. Yes, I took the inputs from what APT taught me, mm-hmm. but I took it extra to go one pager on what do I need for each answer that I have. Just the basic. There was no if fish that I put there. There was no auditing eyes standard that I put there. I was like, if my layout is correct, if my structure is correct, I will fill in the blanks on the day. Mm-hmm. So that was my first approach. Number two, obviously, I'm not a fast typer. I, I, I type slow. I'm not even going to lie. I type slow. But then I realized that, as you said, quality versus quantity. I'm like, if I can address what they are asking me before I put in other things to make it nice. My typing 
slow will not even have an impact because did I address what they asked me? Yes. Mm. Anything else that I don't have time to, to, to make nice, it's fine. Mm. So it was always layout structure, did I address, move on. I'm telling you, APC on the day threw me off because they tell you if you did APT, you'll get seven or eight questions. Mm. That was not APC three. No, the questions were so many. You'll get question A. Question one would have A and B and C. You're like, that is not eight questions. By the time I get to eight questions, I've already have three on one and two on that's five already. So that helped me now to know, okay, I cannot answer everything in broad, but I need to answer. Meaning, if they are asking me a deferred question, give them deferred, move on. Anything else... You cannot. Right now, I was aiming for a C. I was like, anything else I cannot put in there. Mm. So with them, yes, on the day, obviously, the, 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 that's how, that was my strategy, to just go answer what was asked and leave it there. Mm. And that was APC3. Mm. Mm. And, yeah, that was APC3. That was literally yeah. APC3. I feel good, but there's still that thing of, once you fail so many times, you just have that thing of, it could be a pass, it could be a fail. It could be a pass, it could be a fail. Yeah. yeah. On that one, before we move on, I just want to highlight the, the, the stuff that you said. Um, you said that you had that one pager. Um, and, and you said it was your own strategy. So I just want to remind you guys, like regardless of the level that you are in, remember, you need to own the work and you need to own your exam technique and what works for you. So, mm. so, so that was a key factor. And I like how... You're so inspiring. I like how you always turn the negative and you, you just, you know, you spin it around and you see how can you be more efficient and maximize on it. Because remember, guys, earlier on, Bonani only got uh, her laptop when she was doing her second attempt of CTA. That's like after five years of being in university like that. that wow, it's, it's still blowing me away. So with that, you just turned it into a positive. You were going to the... Um, uh, to the computer lab and when you were there you were able to use the time efficiently and do what you need to do so that you can get out and now you realize that okay when it comes to typing on this laptop for apc it's taking me a while but what can i do like you didn't sit there and be like no typing is not my thing and sat and complain you're like nope what I'm going to do is that I'm going to see what the HC students are doing I'm going to see what the uh, C students are doing and then you are like okay these are the stuff that I need to put in. So in as much as I can type slow, but I'll ensure that I only have the, that. Is, that's a great tip, guys. Wow. I hope you're listening. Wow. Wow. And I like how you said, um, whenever they ask you anything, for example, a defect text question, answer the question. Like sometimes we want to tell people, you know, the history, but just answer the question, move on. Like, wow. Okay. So I think now, I'll voluntarily um, close this so that we just don't get cut off so that we can continue from that on the next one. So guys, please join us on the next one. It's almost an hour, so I'm just going to cut it before Instagram cuts us so that we can continue on the next one. Shapo.